Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today we'll be covering the new update to Signalis that came out this week in honor of the one year anniversary of Signalis. This update 1.2 is called Krahe, meaning crow. It is a massive update featuring two new rooms, many new documents, new lore, background code changes, and accessibility changes. And over the course of this video, I'll cover everything that has changed in this update. So with no further delay, let's just get right into it. Let's start out with the new rooms. Our first new room is found on the Protector's floor. Clearing the game as one normally does, you can fight your way into the dark storage dorm. Reaching the end of the dorm and clearing all the enemies, you may notice a hatch open up for you to enter that wasn't there prior. I should note that this hatch is hard to get if you activate cheats or any type of console commands. However, if you play normally, it should easily open. After the hatch opens, you can descend down it, and your light will flicker off. You can then bumble around in this thin dark corridor, and you can find some nearby UV lamps with some flowers under them. And next to this is the last surviving Aura unit. Communicating with the Aura unit, she expresses some frustrations, stating, Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be down in the mine? Your flashlight? Let me take a look. Try it now. The flashlight, which was disabled upon entering the room, is now going to be turned back on, and you can actually use it to exit the room. Continuing to speak with the Aura, they say, Can you believe this? All these files, they think they know us so well. So much talk about personal and stabilization. In the end, they just want us to shut up and work until we die. What a joke. What do you mean you don't remember me? Did you hit your head? I'm staying here. No chance I'm going back to the work. This R is an interesting character. Seemingly unaware of the decay of the facility, she must have lost her post prior to the decay, instead opting for isolation as a result of learning the truth of her position. She also expresses having seemingly known Elster in the past, which is a matter we'll get back to. Looking around, we can see that this Aura has been collecting classified documents along with growing her plants, which is really just a nice slice of isolation from the chaos and destruction of the rest of the game. Also nearby is a document that is labeled classified that we can read. It reads as followed. Classified information, commander's eyes only. Aeon Guideline 176 for the deployment of operational procedures, Operation Psychology. In order to reliably protect the safety of our nation, AM must develop and deploy procedures and technologies to maintain complete control over all replicas and service of the nation. Just like with Gestalt's, procedures involving operational psychology are highly effective for behavior control of replicas. The primary advantage of replicas over Gestalt is predictability. All newly deployed replicas of a model are virtually identical, both physically and psychologically, as they all share the same memories, and under the same circumstances, a newly deployed Yule unit will practically always react in the same way. However, as soon as a unit encounters new situations, it will begin to deviate from the original pattern. In some cases, this may lead to the unit being less efficient for its intended purpose. This is called persona degradation. Using a wealth of information about the life of a gestalt, each neural pattern is based on, allows us to ensure an optimal, uniform post-deployment development of each unit. In simpler terms, our primary objective is on the focused manipulation of the individual to ensure they remain as close to the original pattern as possible, and thus productive, loyal, and docile for as long as possible. This is called persona stabilization. Stabilization can come in many forms and usually takes on the form of regular activities or fetish objects that can distract and calm the replica. Until the development of bioresonant technology that allows wide-scale direct behavioral control, the methods of operational psychology still remain the most reliable way to control both replicas and gestalts in the interest of the protection of national security. This document is huge lore-wise, with it providing greater insight into ideas like persona degradation, the nature of replicas, why replicas seem more steadily deployed than gestalts, as well as acknowledging the limits of the control that bioresonant units have. The war updates in this update are something that I will cover more extensively in a separate video because it's a lot and it's a lot to tow through and this update already has a lot to go through without going into the war, but it's certainly very interesting and it's something I'm very captivated by uh, seeing that we're getting actual war updates in this update. But with our flashlight fixed, we can now leave. By walking back, some Super City fans may notice a similarity between the start of this corridor and an old dev tweet from Yuri. Upon leaving this area, the hatch will close back up and we will not be able to go back down, returning us to the normal procession of the game. Now for the second new room. This can be found at the very end of the game. By going all the way to the end day corridor, one can read the document on the desk. Doing so, they should turn around and go all the way down the corridor again, revealing that the entry door has now been replaced with a new door. 
this new door leads to Adler's study. This room, while we've been in it before, is slightly different from its past version. First, if we didn't leave the rifle prior, on the chair in this room it will now lay, allowing us to have it for the final fight, and offering a chance to be more of an Adler simp than with Isa. But the rifle isn't the only spot of interest, as this room features three new documents. First, Adler's diary returns, but with the original copy comes two new copies that differ slightly. I'm going to now read the two new diaries. Date, 84216. I've been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage, a strange box with a removable dial on the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking, like a clock. Date, 84217. Met with Calibri to review the latest additions to the faculty staff. As usual, it ended in an extended argument. No matter what I do, that woman always seems to have to have the last word. Still, we both agreed that the Elster unit was a good investment, so no adjustments will need to be made for now. Date, 84218. Another boring day. Even the paperwork is uninteresting and trivial lately. On the way back to my room, I saw another new star unit hit her head on a door frame. Date, 84219. Had to go down to the mining site today for the scheduled inspection. The new Elster unit was showing some surveying equipment to me when she said something about planets and stars, which suddenly made me realize what the dial reminded me of. An astronomical calendar. We'll have to investigate further at once now that my shift is over. Date, 8421A. The little enigma of that box could only distract me from the dullness of work for so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, of which all the pages turned out to be blank. While the mechanism is fascinating, I'm not sure what to do with the box yet. And make a nice gift for the commander. Maybe I should ask Koibri what she thinks. Date, 8421B. In a fit of adventurousness, I decided to try something new for dinner, and promptly regretted it. I could barely stomach the taste. Such a detestable combination of sweet and savory, and made me sick. Date, 8421C. Another diary filled, for no benefit but my own satisfaction. I've not ordered a new one yet, since I've spent all my saved ration marks on that marvelous-looking fountain pen. But I guess I'll make use of that notebook. Date, 8421 I have been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage. A strange box with a removable dial on the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear to the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking like a clock. Date, 84217. Met with Calibri to review the latest additions to faculty staff. Halfway through the meeting, she stormed out of the room for no discernible reason. While incredibly rude of her, I didn't particularly mind since I've had a quite annoying headache since this morning. Date, 84218. I had a dream tonight, the first one in a long time. There was a young woman, her hair is white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on them, but I can't remember what I was doing with them. Date, 84219. I had to go down to the mining site today for the scheduled inspection. I was still waiting for that new Elster unit we ordered. The shipment was delayed by several cycles, but the excavation progress is on schedule, so it shouldn't be a problem as long as no more staff gets sick. Date, 8421A. I finally managed to open that strange box. Sadly, all it contained was a small notebook, which all pages turned out to be blank. For some reason, I feel like I knew beforehand, as if I had already opened the box before. Did I dream it? Date, 8421B. Apparently, there's more rumors of an infectious disease spreading among the Gestalt workers. Could it be another flu outbreak? The timing is quite concerning. Date, 8421C. Another diary filled, for no benefit but my own satisfaction. I've not yet ordered a new one yet since I spent all my saved ration marks on that marvelous looking fountain pen, but I guess I'll make use of that notebook. These diaries are huge at understanding the Calibri commander, Adler, and the nature of Elster. First, Adler and Calibri's dynamic was more like combative siblings who constantly bickered, rather than the previously held notion that they were more in a romantic gesture. But as evident by his decision to seek her for help, it's clear that a level of respect existed between him and his colleague, as was partially theorized prior. If anything, these notes portray Adler as the more proactive of the two, pushing for the need of Elster unit as opposed to Calibri, who seems to have reservations in this regard. Something that demonstrates his very action-based methodology he takes regarding the cycles in game prior to his descent to madness, and even while he's completely insane. Calibri also being demonstrated as his equal is important, as Rem really restates just how integral the Calibri cadre was to keeping control in the facility, and how its damage could easily be done by its destruction. They also demonstrate just how confused the fabric of reality is at this point, and strongly brings into question the nature of the cycle, the nature of Adler's room, and the entire concept of if multiple realities are converging, all things that are interesting to consider, but we have more update to cover for today, so 
we can't consider them. The last document in this room is a short list that has an interesting cast of characters in it. This list labeled Excavation List C demarks Mina S2301, aka Bio, Ara S2318, aka the Vent Ara, and Elster S2301, aka Elena's Elster, and our Elster's prior form at the beginning of the game, as all being on a squad together. The implication this document has, the R's document, dialogue, and Adler's diaries, all have when combined for the nature of elster s23 is huge but we gotta keep moving on here so while we're on the topic of adware we should really mention another background change um this being that the code around somewhere and adware's boss fight have been stabilized greatly this isn't the only code to have that a lot of cut content and a lot of move content that doesn't fully function seems to have been greatly stabilized in the background of the code meaning it's much easier to restore it and actually get a good look at it from inside the game. I won't really cover this detail here. Again, this update's massive. I can't cover every single intricate detail and the implications it has, but it is something to definitely keep an eye out for. Outside of the new rooms this update brought, there's also a series of other new documents that help us dig deeper into the lore. First, we have the dictionary. This document can be found in the first floor library and gives us insight into two very important phrases in the game. Most important phrases in the game or two of the most important phrases in the game. These being replica, which is described as replica. Now, plural, replicas, except on Kazyeth, where it is replica. It's shortened from archaic replicat, meaning copy or replica. It's a biomechanical person, a synthetic reproduction of a gestalt, a biological culture grafted onto an artificial endoskeleton and enclosed in a protective exoskeleton. Then we get the definition of gestalt, Gestalt is a noun, plural is gestalt, shortened from archaic ergastalt. It means original shape, meaning compare, archetype. It's comparable to uh, archetype and prototype. A person that is not a replica. This gives us a tiny bit of insight into these two very important phrases, but uh, heading into nowhere, we can now head into the room where Elena's third diary is, and here we can see a new book sitting on the desk. This book reads as follows. Even in the darkest depths, the song of the cosmos can still be heard in the aether, the sound of the stars. This is an interesting document that seems to be about bioresonance, and kind of reads a lot like the books and notes that we see on the shores of eternity. So in a different room within nowhere, there is a painting that can be examined, and examining it reveals the following dialogue. The painting is destroyed beyond recognition, and the plaque on the frame says, metamorphosis. After that, we can head to Rotfront, where we find the last four new documents of this update. First, you can head towards the PC room, and we can see in the hallway of that, that leads towards that room, a new poster. This is the Colibri poster, which is marking the newest replica poster to be added to the game. It's adorable, and reads, it's your duty, report suspicious elements immediately to the block work. While it could be argued that this poster is about the block work, the block work and the Colibris are the same unit, so it's good enough. Moving on, continuing into the game, we can get to the dark room. Looking around here, another new document named Stolen Files is found. It reads as follows. Carefully selected by Aeon, exemplary citizens of the nation are permanently cryogenically preserved in neural archives, each becoming a neural pattern for a new replica model. To preserve the image of the replica as an incorruptible ideal, the original crystal is erased from records in public memory. During this production process, when experienced by a resonant technicians copy that neural pattern to a new unit, a majority of episodic memories are altered and suppressed. While the resulting replica maintains the skills and personalities of the original Gestalt, it will be incapable to recall specific events from the life of the donor under normal circumstances. This ensures that the replica performs its duties without distractions created by personal memories of the donor. However, even the best maintained replica units will eventually be exposed to stimuli that may cause Gestalt memories to resurface. While units degraded in such way pose no particular danger, like all units with persona degradation, they will eventually lose many of their advantages over gestalt workers. Because persona degradation is usually difficult to identify from the outside, bioresonance is used by command units to surveil units under their command. Generally, it is recommended that to swiftly decommission and replace units before their productivity decrease or they begin showing clear signs of individuality. When ammunition is rationed, alternative ways of decommissioning may be deployed at the discretion of the local operational command. Finally, we can make our way to the most heartbreaking scene of the game. After losing Issa before our very eyes, the devs have put forth two new documents. First, Prometheus, which reads, Here sit I, forming mortals, after my image, a race resembling me, 
to suffer, to weep, to enjoy, to be glad, and thee to scorn as I. And then, by a resonant phenomena, which reads, synchronicity. Phenomena that are meaningly related, yet lack a causal relationship. We've yet to discover the true source of the ability of the mind to alter the physical world. Yet creating physical phenomena remotely simply by consciously or unconsciously willing them into existence forms the basis of the entire field of bioresonance technology. Before the advent of bioresonance technology, a causal correlations were often falsely interpreted as simply chance. Many phenomena, such as remote viewing, doppelgangers, or the poly effect, have since been classified as synchronistic phenomena related to bioresonant effects. The world we live in would be impossible without bioresonance but its origins remain unclear. If it was truly a divine gift from outer space, as the late Empress claims, why was she defeated by our great revolutionary, who had no such divine powers? Also, there was a couple other minor different changes outside of new documents. There's also a couple of minor changes that isn't really new documents, but rather is just cool stuff that I kind of think we should note here. Um, so the first thing is, we have some changes to the UV scanner, where originally lay the replica feet, which existed in all of their chaotic glory, we now have the new clock. This clock is really intricately detailed, and it's pretty cool to see, but it doesn't really seem to be anything at the moment. Um, I think with more time and investigation, we may find some secrets with this, but at the moment, I don't have anything to tell y'all. Next, we have a new single dialogue in memory. Um, I, I say this is the only one I can definitively say is new. Um, because it's the only one that we couldn't get the dialogue prompt to work in 1.1, and that was new. Uh, this new dialogue prompt is after interacting with the corner. It states, Arion's medical checkup is not due for several days. There's likely more new dialogue. We just haven't found it yet, would be my guess. And also, it's really hard to, like, cross-compare what's new from 11.1 um, when all of 11.1's dialogue wasn't found. So, finally, in Gestad 1... There is now a hand located in the inland entrance. This Elster arm reaches out of the flesh, likely symbolic of the hand Elster loses shortly after in Nowhere. Finally, to conclude, we should mention the gameplay improvements. This is the only part of the update that was actually detailed on the Steam page. The rest of this entire video was hidden in classic Rose Engine fashion. Um, first, they added an option to adjust your inventory capacity, making sure you can choose classic, i.e. the one they give you in the game, expanded, which gives you a larger inventory, or revised, which gives you an inventory that doesn't count the idiotic module or the flashlight as occupying inventory spots. Next, they added an option to invert Y-axis in first-person scenes, an input scheme for the Azerty-style keyboards, an option to reduce some high-frequency flickering visual effects, and an an option to allow using health items while at full health to dispose of them to make up free space in your inventory. And finally, they improved interaction angles for hole jumping and ladder climbing interactions, really just smoothing the game out overall. This update was massive, but I finally think we've gotten through everything new, at least everything that we know of is new as of this moment. Um, and this is a lot of content for us. It's the greatest content released the game has seen since its initial release, giving us City Nerds something to dig our teeth into, not only in a lore capacity, but also from an exploration capacity, as there's most likely a lot of dialogue that just hasn't been found yet that is new. So I'm really excited for the next couple of weeks as we delve into what exactly is new going on in this game. But a uh, happy city birthday to everyone and all Signalis fans, new and old. And uh, yeah, this has been Christopher Beast. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.